3981 cleared for the descent into Longstar, local QNH 1022. Change over to 118.7 decimal seven for unmaintaining at Longstar, call again once ever. Zimbabwe aviation sector is growing tremendously as it took a new trajectory since the inception of the Second Republic. The use of air travel has become a norm in this modern world due to globalization. In this regard, Zimbabwe now boasts of eight state-of-the-art airports, of which seven of them are international airports and only one is a domestic airport. The seven international airports include the New Look Mashingo Airport, the exciting Buffalo Range Airport, the magnificent Joshua Mkabobongkomo International Airport, the spectacular Victoria Falls International Airport, the shiny Kariba Airport, the eventful Charles Prince Airport, and the breathtaking Robert Gabriel Mugabe International Airport. Meanwhile, the Roaring Wange National Park Airport is the only domestic airport. All these airports offer different and fast access to the country's major economic zones and tourist resort areas. Credit to the Airports Company of Zimbabwe for managing and developing all airports in Zimbabwe with the mantra of being a regional hub of air services by 2030. We are aggressively going out there uh, to attract airlines, more and more airlines to come in and to fly into our airports. We are also developing a non, a, what we call non-aeronautical revenue or non-aviation related revenue so that we complement our uh, aeronautical revenues. So we have got several initiatives that we are embarking on to ensure that we develop uh, non-commercial activities or rather commercial activities that will supplement our business. In addition to that, we are also pushing the Going Green initiative. As you know that there is a, a talk of a, a carbon reduction, a carbon dioxide emissions reduction. We are also actively engaged in that uh, through our initiatives of uh, uh, developing solar farms within the airport so that our, power, our airports will be uh, powered by solar um, as, as clean energy. We are also pushing to ensure that most of the, of the vehicles that we use around the airport will be electric vehicles. So we've got all those initiatives that we are going to, to embark on to ensure that we become a, a regional hub of airport services by 2030. The government of Zimbabwe is seized with seeing the growth and expansion of the aviation sector as it has significantly impacted on the economic growth agenda. Hence, it is forcefully behind advancement of this zone. The idea of an aviation sector is now to say how do we then co connect from the ground to the air, from the rail to the air, where we are saying these are modes of transport which will then enhance the ease of doing business. It will also develop in terms of economic activities, where we are saying at the end of the day, if we've got a vibrant aviation sector, it means in terms of perishables moving from one point to the other, that will be delivered quickly. And I'm happy that this is what we are also running with as, as, as government. And again, because of the wise counsel of His Excellency Comrade Dr. Amasod Mzimnangagwa, he then had to engage his counterpart in China for us to then develop our own uh, flagship project, which is the Robert Gabriel Mugabe International Airport, where we have seen that uh, from 2.5 that we can handle in terms of passengers, we are now in a position to accommodate 6 million passengers and also the, in terms of the equipment that we can handle. We are talking of the wide-bodied uh, airplanes, we are talking of the Airbus 380, we are talking of the Airbus 350, that we can also accommodate on the same, which would then make us as a country compete with other countries um, world over. Significant progress and development have been made in all these airports, particularly the Mashingo Airport, which is one of the airports the majority of the Zimbabwean citizens are not well versed with. This airport is central to aviation process as it enables traffic from the south and it is a mandatory reporting point in Zimbabwe's airspace especially on routing from South Africa or the opposite. The air traffic control and management systems installed at the airport are new. 
The airport has recently mounted equipment in the air traffic control tower with state-of-the-art radios and controls that integrate with air navigation services with a new fixed backup power to keep the station running throughout. The airstrip also has newly fitted Doppler VHF omnidirectional and range and distance measuring equipment and a well-serviced runway that can accommodate aircrafts such as Boeing 737 in size. Mashingo has got the latest in terms of technology. Uh, this airport can handle up to a 737 uh, type of aircraft. Uh, this airport is very functional. All the equipment, we've got the nav aids, good state of the art radio communication systems, and it's ready to serve you. Buffalo Range Airport, the main gateway to the Great Limpopo Transfrontier Conservation Area and southeastern Lofeld, strategically positioned between the two major sugar estates, which are Hippo Valley and Triangle stretches its services to Greenfield Chisumbanje Ethanol Plant, Middle Sabi, Gonarejo, and Kruger National Parks. Commissioned in 1965, the airport handles an average of 200 to 250 aircrafts and between 500 and 600 travelers per month. Buffalo Range Airport connects directly with OR Tambo International Airport. It has a capacity of handling 90-seater aircrafts, Rehabilitation was done in phases, starting with the main runway, followed by the taxways and apron. All commercial services with the provision of air control services with a weather radar that covers a 3km radius. Refueling and fire prevention services are available at the aerodrome. World-renowned celebrities use this airport as it also covers Save Valley and Malilangwe Conservancy up to Manikaland. The airport is actually uh, strategically positioned to serve the tourism sector, to link uh, the Vic Falls area and um, uh, the wilderness uh, within the Konare Show, and then the, 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 the beach uh, at Filanclos. That route, if, actually, if, if it is actually uh, capitalized, it's actually a very lucrative route in terms of uh, tourism. Um, the domestic co connectivity is actually a very serious gap at the moment because uh, when people fly uh, from all over the world uh, into Harare, then at times uh, if you can't charter, then at least you're actually forced to uh, use the road motor transport. Joshua Kabogongkomo International Airport, the second largest airport in Zimbabwe, which has the capacity to handle any size of the aircraft, just like the Robert Gabriel Mugabe International Airport. One airport with underground refueling systems on the apron, a wider viewing canopy, four international boarding gates and four domestic boarding gates, serves a large catchment area such as Matibele Land North where there is Kami Ruins and Wange National Park, Matibelelen South, where there is Matopo Hills and Matopos National Park. Vlaoyo being the host to the largest industrial sites in Zimbabwe, this airport serves as a pivotal role to industry economy, another stride made by the Second Republic. Post-COVID-19, the airport registered a significant increase in air travels, with more airlines on board to channel their aircraft through this port. The airport has a second runway ready for use in case of emergencies. We no longer have these uh, idle moments uh, where sometimes people could uh, go idle for say two or three hours. It's no longer possible. Uh, from as early as 6 a.m. in the morning, people are busy until 7 p.m. in the evening um, because the, the flights are, are, are coming. We envisage uh, the coming in of uh, uh, South Air, Fly South Air. Uh, that, that's a totally different market because uh, South Air is a low cost airline and we believe they are going to tap into that market and Bulawayo, as you would be. <laughs> yeah, in the know, 
Uh, Bulawayo has got a lot of uh, people who go to South Africa. If anything, uh, we expect to see more, more, more passengers coming on Fly Safi once they start flying. In terms of uh, further developments, we are looking at um, the cargo side of things. Uh, you know, to put up cargo facilities, cold chain facilities, because the market, we believe the market is there. We've been talking to people around here in Bulawayo and uh, the environs of Bulawayo. We see a lot of potential in terms of uh, cargo and hot culture. Wange National Park Airport, constructed between 1961 and 1974, links one of the largest inland national parks in Africa, the Wange National Park. This particular game reserve is home to the Big Five, which are lions, elephants, leopards, buffalo and rhinoceros. Wange National Park Airport handles daily scheduled flights by fast jet from Arare via Kariba Airport. The airport also knobs around 120 aircrafts, including chartered and private planes. An average of 400 passengers are received every month. The airport can accommodate three or four sized Airbus, and it is currently under rehabilitation and reconfiguration to cater for increased traffic and business. Wange National Park Airport uh, has started reconfiguration and uh, reconstruction of other buildings to accommodate more passengers who are expected to come. As such, there's a demarcation of uh, arriving and departures and also we have ablution facilities for the arriving passengers. Kariba Airport opened in 1958. It is the hub of the Zambezi Valley. The airport serves the other airstrips in the area such as Bumi Hills. Fothergill, Kiplins, and Mana Pools, among others. Aviation fuel filling stations are available, providing both Jet A1 and AF gas fuels. Long term plans are to relocate the airport to an identified land which gives room for expansion, unlike the current location, which is limited by the physical barriers such as the electricity pylons and the Kariba Dam. The Airport is serviced by FastJet, which does uh, daily flights into the airport. And we've seen a marked increase in passenger and air traffic movements uh, due to the introduction of uh, FastJet. Uh, our traffic has doubled, which is a good development. And uh, the airport is um, the hub to the Zambezi Valley because we service uh, airports airstrips that are dotted along the Zambezi Valley. Victoria Falls International Airport, commissioned in 2016, is the second most busiest airport in Zimbabwe. The coming in of the Second Republic saw Victoria Falls assuming the tourism city status. The airport is of paramount importance as it serves both tourism and business activities. Post-COVID-19 era, there was a significant increase in air travels to tourism cities as the airport is currently serviced by nine airlines, namely Air Zimbabwe, Ethiopian Airways, South African Airways, FastJet, Fly Safair, Eurowings Discover, among others. Frequencies from airlines have expressively increased as the airport serves the whole Southern African region within a two-hour flight from Angola, Botswana, Namibia, South Africa, Zambia, Mozambique, Malawi, and Tanzania. Planes such as Eurowings Discover connects with Victoria Falls from Frankfurt in Germany via Fintuk in Namibia. This airport has three aero bridges, 14 boarding gates, and three state-of-the-art departure lounges and accommodates around 2 million passengers per annum. This airport is also a regional tourism hub. It is located central to the southern Africa. It gives link uh, to six countries in two hours. You can have access, within two hours, you can access to six countries, which is Namibia, Angola, Zambia, Botswana, and Mozambique. And a lot of airlines, they have increased their frequencies uh, from daily to twice daily, and some from four weekly to, uh, to daily services. 
Ethiopian Airlines was operating five times weekly, now it's operating daily. Uh, first jet is operating twice into Harare and twice into Johannesburg, same as Airlink into Johannesburg and Cape Town. So we have quite a, a lot of traffic, the tourism industry is improving. Charles Prince Airport was opened in 1954 as a military training airport and in 1973 it was converted into a civilian airport operating commercially. The aerodrome mainly services private players numbering to 15 which own aircrafts and hangars. The runway is 1.2 kilometers long and only accommodates small planes but plans are in place to increase its size in order to accommodate larger aircrafts. Terminal building was recently expanded and now port health and security are accommodated at the airport. All pilot trainings include private pilot licensing. This is done at Charles Prince Airport. In fact, it is the only airport license that trains pilots in Zimbabwe. Air shows and skydiving activities are done at this airport, though everything is certainly controlled with state-of-the-art radio equipment being used by the Air Traffic Controller Communication System. Aircraft engineering, flight chartering and aviation in general are done at this particular airport. Players such as Executive Air, Central Air Transport Services, Guthrie Aviation among others also conduct pilot training, flight chartering, engineering and aviation training. Zimbabwe's own Msani Engineering does aircraft engineering, engines overhaul and has one of the best aircraft engineering and service machines in Africa. This airport, uh, it has got a, a length of runway of 1,200 meters, or 1.2 kilometers. So that's the maximum length of the runway. So this uh, length of the runway only allow uh, landing and takeoff of small aircrafts. For example, uh, maximum capacity of uh, seats is about 15 seats um, uh, capacity of the passengers. So that's why I, I talked about the plans of expanding this airport. So since the Second Republic, one of the major activities which we did was the, the terminal buildings, which is behind me, uh, which is written in Charles Prince Airport. It used to be very small, uh, but it was uh, increased. So it's, it, it is now uh, uh, the, it's, it's now it's the capacity of holding the, 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 the staff. It's more like we, we increase the space for the staff to, 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 to occupy this place. The Airports Company of Zimbabwe, having the mandate to run and develop airports throughout the country, operates as a commercial entity and has plans to construct airports in Mutare and Bainbridge. Meanwhile, construction is going on at the Robert Gabriel Mugabe International Airport with the whole terminal set to be completed around June 2024. We are the, the entity under the Ministry of Transport and Infrastructure Development that is mandated to run the airports in the country, to develop the airports in the country. We identify even areas where new airports have to be constructed and then we recommend uh, to the government uh, for that construction. Sometimes also the government identifies and uh, 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 gives us direction on how to develop certain airports in areas that are not yet currently saved. You recall also that uh, we do have areas where we have been talking about uh, having airports like also even as, as contained in NDS-1. To have an airport in Mutare where there is no airport, to have an airport in uh, Bridge where there is no airport or to develop the airports in uh, Kariba, uh, relocating the current airport and developing it uh, in, to, uh, into a, on, on a new site. In addition to all these significant developments in the aviation sector, the government of Zimbabwe is forging ahead in making sure the transport and infrastructure of this country matches Vision 2030. Of paramount importance is the resuscitation of Air Zimbabwe, National Railways of Zimbabwe, while continuing with other projects such as roads construction and country borders expansions targeting Chirundu and Forbes border posts. If you want to develop any economy, you need to build a road face according to Chinese proverb. And we are saying if you have vibrant and uh, trafficable roads, then you would now need to move whatever you move. Then connecting to the aviation sector, that's when we talk of a vibrant aviation sector at the end of the day. But what is important is you then also need to administer the trunk roads, which will also enable you to connect with neighbors. And in our case, we've got Mozambique, we've got um, Mozambique through Forbes, 
our Mozambique through uh, Nyamapanda. We also have Zambia through Chirundu. We have got uh, Botswana through Plum Tree, and we have South Africa through Bay Bridge. So we are saying connectivity to corners of, uh, of the country through our ports of entry is also very important. So what is of paramount importance to make sure that the trunk roads are trafficable. And thus you have seen the government embarking on a massive road rehabilitation program. We were talking of Harare Bay Bridge, which is our flagship. And now we are moving towards uh, north, which is Chirundu, uh, trying to make sure that we then rehabilitate our roads. But uh, what you have to bear in mind, uh, life, is other jurisdictions, they have concessional facilities to rehabilitate infrastructure. But in our case, because of the advent of illegal sanctions upon us, we cannot access cheap funding. And we are resorting to domestic resource mobilization. And that's why you are seeing that we are tapping into the fiscals, into the budget, so that whatever we do in terms of road rehabilitation, we are using our own resources. And not only our own resources, but our own people who are rehabilitating. And we must commend the Second Republic again for coming up with this initiative that we must use our own resources. The government of Zimbabwe seeks to provide seamless air, road and rail transport networks, which are the cornerstone of economic development. As a result, it has established a framework to lessen the burden on the Treasury to allow for private sector contribution.